Welcome back to AM Northwest. He's made some of his best friends thanks to tequila, haven't we all? And his new book will help you love it just as much as he does. Here to show us how to do a proper tasting, we welcome the author of A Field Guide to Tequila, Clayton Check. Good to have you with us, Clayton. Good morning. Nice Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. Likewise. First of all, tell me about your love of tequila. Where did it all begin? Well, it began with uh, a passion for the Spanish language when I was in high school back a few decades ago, yeah. and then a love for Mexico, Mexican culture, the Mexican people. Uh, I have the privilege of living in Mexico full time and have for many That's years. Great. Yeah. So it all started with um, being immersed in the culture and the language and liking a tipple once in a while. So yeah. if those two things come together, you're going to find tequila sooner or later, and I did. What is tequila? Tequila Tequila is a uh, distilled spirit, so it's hard liquor. Right. Um, it's made from a type of agave plant, often called century plants in the United States. They're these big spiky plants that yeah. look a little bit like an aloe, but they're not an aloe. And the juice. Here we're taking a look at. Oh, yeah, yeah. beautiful pictures from the book. Um, Grover Sanchegrin took those, and they are, uh, it is the distilled spirit made from the fermented juice of the cooked blue agave. Okay. <laughs> and then, so then, so then it gets put into many drinks, but you believe in just tasting tequila, right? Yeah, yeah. I think if a tequila is well made, um, it like is... What are we looking at here? Sorry. We are, this is fermentation. Um, okay. this, this, so that is the cooked agave juice going into fermentation tanks where yeast, just like in the process of beer or wine making, are going to eat up the sugar that's produced by the agave and broken down into simpler form in cooking, and they're going to ferment that into alcohol, and then that's going to be concentrated in distillation. I see different colors there. Are there different um, tastes to tequila, like, like wine? Would be? Th there, there are, and that can uh, have to do with region. That can have to do with the tradition of the producer. Um, what you see here is a reposado. This is a tequila that means it's lightly rested. Uh, it's been in an oak barrel for a minimum of two months. This one will have been in a barrel for about four or five months, so it's okay. got a very, very light straw color to it, um, and that'll smooth it out a little bit and make it a little more friendly to an American palate that might be more uh, tuned to whiskey drinking, say. Oh, okay, so the palate for Americans is very different than the palate for... Yeah, well, you know, in a lot of countries, tequila was only a white spirit, meaning it had no aging in oak for hundreds of years. Right. And then with contact with the United States and Europe, uh, the oak barrel came into the tradition. And as North Americans, we're typically whiskey drinkers or our fine spirits or brown spirits. And right. they get that color right. and right. those flavors from the oak barrels. Right. And so the tequilas that have been aged in used whiskey barrels are going to be a little more of a friendly bridge to the category for someone who grew up maybe around whiskey. So let's say someone wants to have a tequila tasting, mm -hmm. you've probably done many of them. I have, and it's in the book. Okay, so let's talk about how do you do that. Yeah, so the first thing you want to do is you want to have appropriate glassware, and you notice that these are champagne glasses, yeah. and that surprises a lot of people. Yes, it does. There, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of space in there, but you want a lot of air, because you really want the space to be able to get nosy with your tequila, to get your nose in there and okay. uh, pick up all the nuanced aromas that are in the glass. And so we're going to take a really extreme angle with this, um, maybe like a 60 degree angle to the floor because this is a really complex spirit and you're going to have aromas coming out at different parts of the glass at the bottom in the middle and at the top really and i'm going to start at the bottom i really get in there because i don't have a super sensitive nose but i'm going to get in there at the bottom close my eyes to focus and start sniffing and as i start sniffing from the bottom i get some really nice toasty oak notes i get some sweet notes from the cooked agave and as i move up I'll start to get more fruit and spice notes. And you'll start to notice that there are different zones to this glass here. If you look at it as a cross section, the aromas are coming out in different places. So let me see. Okay, yeah. I can do this here. And like with any tasting, aroma is a big part of what's going on. And I like to have my mouth closed. I like to close my eyes uh, so I can really focus on the aromas there. And you notice a little bit yeah, of a difference from the bottom to the top? Yes. Yeah. So we can start with that uh, and then okay. move into the tasting and a lot of what we do when we taste tequila, we basically borrowed from wine people because people have been uh, tasting wine in a serious way for a lot longer than sure. folks have been tasting tequila for a serious way. But there's a lot more alcohol in this. This is 40% alcohol by volume or 80 proof, so it's much, much stronger than a wine. So we have to treat it a little more delicately. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a warm-up. We're going to have one small sip. This is where people say, oh, it burns, it bites. Well, that's your mouth doing its job, warning right. your brain that this is strong medicine. Yeah. And, and if you, if you do too much do of it, stupid. you're going to be in trouble. It's 9 in the morning right so your, your mouth is going to send a little panic signal to your brain you have to let it get over that with a really small sip that you're going to use to wash all around your mouth with your tongue you're going to rub it into your upper gums you look real silly doing it but i'll do it okay upper gums lower gums roof of mouth swallow what's down don't judge the tequila on that warm-up it's the warm-up it's not a sip it's like stretching before you run it doesn't right. always feel good so i'm going to okay. do this in a real exaggerated way this is the smallest sip i can reasonably call a sip really really tiny Okay, 
And now I just don't evaluate it, I don't judge that. I love it. This is the right, best time for me to taste tequila. Uh -huh. For some people, it might be a little harsh, it might be a little too much, especially at this time of day. <laughs> Once There's you've done that. the warm up, yeah. <laughs> you've cleaned out your mouth, you've woken okay. up your taste buds, and you've also allowed your brain to have a little moment of panic and file this information <laughs> away. It follows a neurological <laughs> panic signal. I am now scared. No, so that's what that burner, that bite is. It's just your mouth telling your brain to be careful with this. Okay. And if you do that, what you'll notice is on your second sip, if you if you feel free, if, if you're ready to do the warm up. Okay, we'll try. And I'll keep talking and we can see what your reaction is. It okay. might be a little stronger than mine was. The morning really is the best time to taste tequila because you haven't fatigued your sense of taste and smell throughout the day. Okay. Yeah. Now, there's a reaction. I am there. not <laughs> judging. You're going to you're going to breathe like that. That's a really good preview because on the second sip is your first taste. And with this, you're going to take a little inhale and make sure you have some air in your lungs. With wine, we taste it inside our mouth. With yeah. spirits, we taste while we're exhaling. So, I'm going to make sure I have some air in my lungs. I'm okay. going to take that same tiny sip, and if this is my tongue, I'm just going to gently roll it across my tongue back and forth and back. Coat the whole top of my tongue, gentle little swallow. The order is very important because once you swallow, you're going to exhale out of your mouth okay. and you're going to have a flavor bloom and okay. that's where you're really tasting it. So I'll do this again in a really exaggerated way for television. Yes. Little breath. And that exhale you're going to notice is a it. very, very different experience than your first warm up okay. because your brain has already done its panic. <laughs> like I'm going swimming. Hold my <laughs> breath. Oh, I taste it more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? So the alcohol has not evaporated. This is still 40% alcohol yeah. by volume. But your perception of the alcohol has been reduced a little bit because yeah. you allowed your brain to process it initially. Yeah. And on the second one and forward, you're going to actually be noticing the aromas and flavors more than the presence of the alcohol, wow. right? Alcohol, obviously, in a moderate amount, makes us feel nice. But the interesting thing that's going on here is all the aromas and flavors. Yeah. And that's what we come back to tequila Absolutely. For. We want to tell everyone the book, again, is called The Field Guide to Tequila. What is it? Where is it from? And how to taste it? Thank you so much, Clayton. Thank you, Helen. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, we'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.